Episode 56 ZZ November 13th, 2024 Uganda asks for aid to replace wood burning with clean energy. In Episode 56 ZZ1 Uganda asks the world for help in ending wood stove use. 2 Atlantic Oceans, North Atlantic designated an emission control area. 3A United States Heat pump makers retro sweats and joggers reframe climate tech as a lifestyle choice. 3E United States Health and Human Services HHS allocates $3.7 billion to lie heap to aid low-income households with energy costs. 3L United States West Coast The worst U.S. cities for air pollution and why they are on the West Coast. Geographical The small particulates from wood burning can cause serious health effects. 4A Michigan EGLE launches new air monitoring dashboard. State of Michigan 4B Michigan Detroit He'll try, but Trump can't stop the clean energy revolution. Planet Detroit A heat pump powers heating and cooling in a Detroit home. 5 Texas Heat pumps could save these Texas households money, reduce grid strain. 6 Vermont and New York Wildfire smoke leads to poor air quality in Vermont and New York. 7 Australia Tasmania 8A United Kingdom and Canada CBC Radio 1's As It Happens interview with Rosamund Adu Kissy Debra about the death of her daughter Ella because of air pollution aired November 6, 2024. 8D United Kingdom Scotland Doctors react as Scotland ditches with burning ban. 9 Sweden 10 India 11 B Pakistan Pakistan's toxic smog cover is now visible from space. The Independent Pakistan city slip under toxic smog as live readings for Lahore show PM 2.5 levels 100 times over what who prescribes. 12 PM 2.5 and human health. Main content. 1A Uganda asks the world for help in ending with stove use. World United Nations Climate Conference COP29 in Baku, Azerbaijan and a speech by the Ugandan energy minister asking for aid for sustainable cooking solutions. Razep view. Developed countries should not burn wood for home heating or cooking because of the air pollution it causes. Developing countries in Africa illustrate the adverse health effects of wood burning done when there are no alternatives. In this article, Ugandan minister requests help to move Ugandans, many in refugee camps, from wood burning to clean alternatives for cooking such as electricity powered by Ugandan solar or hydroelectric energy, both of which are forms of clean energy. Refugees in Uganda use wood for cooking, and Uganda needs to find clean cooking solutions instead, because wood burning causes deforestation and also, most importantly in Razep's view, pollutes the air. Key excerpt from the article. To tackle this, the Ugandan energy minister has advocated for the establishment of communal clean cooking facilities within refugee communities, which would use cleaner energy sources rather than firewood. This approach, she explained, would not only help protect Uganda's forest reserves but also address the health hazards associated with traditional wood-burning stoves. The health risks are severe, she shared, recounting her personal experience of losing a family member potentially due to indoor air pollution from wood-burning stoves. Nankabirwa's proposal also calls attention to the physical and logistical burdens that refugees, primarily women and children, face in their daily search for firewood. Jenny Bates, Director General of Economics, Climate, and Global Issues at the UK's Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office, expressed the UK's commitment to supporting climate solutions in Africa. Bates pointed out that Africa, despite contributing minimally to global carbon emissions, is among the most affected by climate change. Bates emphasized that the UK, through partnerships with organizations like British International Investment, BII, has invested heavily in sustainable energy across Africa, including solar projects in Sierra Leone, Kenya, and Egypt. From the article headline, African countries including Uganda and Nigeria. COP29. Nankabirwa calls for clean cooking solutions to support refugee communities, protect forests. Nile Post. Woodbinning stoves. The health risks are severe, she shared, recounting her personal experience of losing a family member potentially due to. She shared smoke daily. The proposal is in line with Uganda's broader energy transition. There is a photo of a woman waiting in a flooded area to show the effects of climate change in Africa, for example using the photo of a woman in Nigeria. WFP. A 50-year-old woman, a resident of Gasimu, wades through the floodwater in Jakusko LGA of Yobe State, Nigeria, on October 1, 2022. Between September 4 and 8, 2024, the Displacement Tracking Matrix, DTM, in collaboration with the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, the Yobe State Emergency Management Agency, Yosima, and the Nigerian Red Cross Society, NRCS, identified 255 locations in Yobe State that were impacted by floods or received internally displaced persons, IDPs, due to the flooding. A new UN report reveals that African cities will be among the hardest hit by the climate crisis. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. November 12, 2024. Nile Post, Kampala. Energy Minister, Ruth Nakabirwa, has called for sustainable clean cooking solutions to support Uganda's extensive refugee population and safeguard the country's forests. Speaking at UK's side event on investing in energy, resilience, and nature in Africa at COP29 conference taking place in Azerbaijan's capital, Baku, Nakabirwa has emphasized the urgent need to address the environmental toll associated with high firewood demand in refugee settlements, which has driven significant deforestation and impacted climate resilience efforts in the region. Uganda hosts the largest refugee population in Africa, providing sanctuary to millions of people fleeing conflicts and crises in neighboring countries like DRC, Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, among others. These clean cooking centers would not only cut down on deforestation but also improve the air quality for thousands of families who, at present, are exposed to harmful smoke daily. The proposal is in line with Uganda's broader energy transition plan, which the government unveiled at COP28. This plan emphasizes the country's commitment to renewable energy sources, which already make up a majority of its energy mix. Nankabirwa highlighted that 90% of Uganda's energy generation comes from renewable sources, primarily hydropower. The communal cooking facilities, she noted, would align with Uganda's goals to expand clean energy use and make sustainable energy accessible and affordable across the country. Through its partnerships with the United Kingdom, Uganda aims to secure funding and technical support for these clean cooking projects, ensuring that they meet both environmental and humanitarian goals. 
Currently, Africa receives only 3% of global climate finance flows. The figure Bates noted is insufficient given the scale of vulnerability in African countries. Bates also highlighted Africa's vast potential to contribute to global climate solutions, with 60% of the world's best solar resources and the Congo Basin, the world's largest carbon sink. Bates pointed to the UK's support for initiatives like the Bridgetown Initiative, which seeks to make climate finance more accessible for countries in need. Minister Nekabirwa praised the UK's support for Uganda, particularly in developing the Climate Clean Cooking Facility within her ministry and establishing a climate finance unit within Uganda's Ministry of Finance. Sign up for free All Africa newsletters. These units are tasked with ensuring Uganda can access climate funding that can be used to support cleaner energy initiatives, including technologies that could reduce the demand for charcoal and firewood in refugee communities. The UK's support also extends to Uganda's efforts in advancing e-mobility, with Nekabirwa noting that Uganda has recently begun manufacturing electric cars and is working to transition motorcycles from petrol to electric power. Bates reiterated the UK's intent to adopt a partner approach that respects the needs of African countries and fosters growth in both regions. She expressed optimism about Uganda's innovative climate solutions and stressed that such partnerships could be instrumental in achieving broader global climate goals. Through ongoing support, Nankabirwa hopes to see these initiatives evolve into a comprehensive model of sustainable refugee management that balances environmental conservation with humanitarian needs a model that could inspire other nations facing similar challenges. 1B World Industrial Heat Pump Industry Research 2024 $9.5 billion market trends, opportunities, and business wire Heat pump technology and expanding applications across various industrial sectors Industrial heat pumps are systems that transfer heat from one to Atlantic Ocean's North Atlantic designated and emission control area Atlantic Ocean Environmental and Health Benefits of a Designated North Atlantic Emission Control Area International Council on Clean Transportation International shipping is a major source of sulfur oxide SOX, particulate matter. The proposed ATECA could cut PM2.5 by 59%. North Atlantic Emission Control Area could save 4,000 lives over next two decades. Lloyd's List PM2.5 Emissions That total rises to between 2,900 and 4,300 preventable deaths when the range is increased to 2030 to 2050, which will in turn Establishing an emission control area for ships in the North Atlantic Ocean could prevent International Council on Clean Transportation, Particulate Matter PM 2.5. One way to mitigate this impact is to establish an ECA. A comprehensive analysis by the ICCT found that by enacting 3A United States, heat pump makers retro sweats and joggers reframe climate tech as a lifestyle choice. Trend watching. With a highly wearable line of branded merch, Quilt gives heat pumps new appeal and its customers a lighthearted way to advocate for climate. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity in relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. The perfect gift for your favorite climate nerd. This heat pump fashion statement. 11062024. Heat pumps are having a moment, and now you can snag merch to match. The perfect gift for your favorite climate nerd. This heat pump fashion statement. Heat pumps are having a moment. They've outsold gas furnaces in the US for the past two years. And they've inspired some fans who love them so much that they're now buying heat pump merch, including socks. Quilt, a heat pump startup launched by an ex-Googler who wanted to make the appliance better looking and easier to install, just rolled out the first ever heat pump capsule collection, including a $55 sweatshirt, a $35 hat, and an 80 style holographic sticker for $2. The designs take inspiration from old HVAC ads but are a lot more fun. When the company's marketing and communications director started at the company about a year ago, they both thought that building awareness and passion about heat pumps would be a challenge. I was like, how are we going to build this movement around an appliance? Says head of marketing Liz Niemeyer. As we started digging in, we realized that there was this really, really passionate sub-community of people who have just been here promoting heat pumps, talking about heat pumps, recommending heat pumps, and have been doing so for years. And that community really was looking for, I think, ways to express themselves. Early on, when the company opened up a waitlist for its first product, the team sent out a survey and promised a heat pump hat to the first 500 people to respond. They ran out of hats nearly immediately. The group of heat pump fans is diverse, Niemeyer says, ranging from HVAC installers who want to help homeowners make the switch to architects who want to build greener buildings to homeowners who want to do something to fight climate change. It's hard to imagine other appliances inspiring quite the same fandom. If I was to play armchair psychiatrist, I think there's something here about how the climate crisis is obviously incredibly stressful and confusing and complicated, Niemeyer says. And a lot of solutions in this space are also quite complicated, are potentially unproven, yet have externalities or compromises or trade-offs that have to be made. This feels like a real solid choice that I can make that is good for the environment and not a compromise in any way. And I think that's one of the reasons it makes it so easy to root for. Switching to heat pumps, which efficiently move heat to make a home warmer or cooler, is one of a handful of actions homeowners can take that make a serious difference in emissions, unlike, say, worrying about how many reusable bags you own. In Electrify, an optimist playbook for our clean energy future, engineer and MacArthur genius Saul Griffith calculates that replacing your furnace with a heat pump is one of the critical personal infrastructure choices homeowners need to make. Rewiring America, the nonprofit Griffith co-founded in 2020 to help electrify the U.S. economy, used a character called Mr. Heat Pump Man to help spread the word about heat pumps in D.C. The nonprofit also helped successfully push to get incentives for heat pumps and other home electrification included in the Inflation Reduction Act. Now, as states from Wisconsin to Maine begin to roll out those incentives, even more people will be moving to heat pumps, and many of them will be advertising that fact on their clothes. The store, which just launched, is getting heavy traffic, Niemeyer says. The socks have been a favorite, she says. The crew neck is a very close second. More merch is likely to follow, she says. The early rate deadline for Fast Company's World Changing Ideas Awards is this Friday, November 15th, at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time apply today. 3B United States. Substack Robert B., Hubble, and Rebecca Solnit.
Resistance affirms our character and conscience. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates. A 501c3 nonprofit organization. November 12, 2024. Robert B. Hubble. The best use of your time today is to read the essay by Rebecca Solnit in The Guardian. Authoritarians like Trump love fear, defeatism, surrender. Do not give them what they want. While I urge you to read Solnit's entire essay, the following excerpts were helpful to me. Hope does not mean saying this is not bad, and it does not mean saying that we can defeat it. It just means saying we will keep showing up, that we will not give up, that we will assess our powers and weaknesses and recognize that the future we face looks grim, but we do not know how it will unfold, and neither do those we oppose. How it will unfold depends in no small part on what we do. People too often think hope is smiles and sunshine, when it's fury in the face of danger and oppression and pressing on in the storm. Fight on might sound like a lot now, but maybe you can at least not quit, even if you need to take time off, which is not the same thing as checking out. 3C United States. Substack. Robert Reich. What will you do? Acknowledging what we are up against. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. November 12, 2024. Friends, many of you are still in shock about what happened a week ago today. Some of you don't even want to read a newspaper or hear the news. Don't get me started about Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, who has turned his X platform into a swamp of Trump lies and propaganda, and now seems joined at the hip to Trump appearing wherever Trump is. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is a nut job. And unlike Trump's first term, the president-elect is now backed by a network of dangerous extremists, including those who have been imprisoned for their part in the attack on the U.S. Capitol, whom Trump has suggested he'll pardon. They will feel emboldened to carry out what they understand to be Trump's wishes. Finally, also unlike before his first term, Trump has explicitly told us what he plans to do and already has people working on getting it done starting January 20th. Mass deportations, prosecution of his political enemies, the use of the military against U.S. citizens, the purging of the civil service across the government and substitution of Trump loyalists, and a promise to play politics with disasters. Project 2025, which was written by more than 140 people who served under Trump the first time around, including several of his former cabinet secretaries, explicitly calls for gutting of overtime pay rules pages 587 and 592, and prioritizing married men and women over other types of families page 489. To enforce these attacks on our rights, Project 2025 would use the Justice Department to prosecute district attorneys Trump disagrees with, invoke the Insurrection Act to shut down protests, and mobilize red state National Guard units against blue states that resist his authoritarian agenda. In sum, my friends, we are facing a catastrophe far worse than what occurred in Trump's first term of office. The meager guardrails that existed then will be gone. We must not avert our eyes from this calamity, or minimize it, or throw up our hands in despair or retreat. We must prepare to fight it. But how? Let me ask you. If this were Germany in 1933, what actions would you take? How different will this be from Germany in 1933? I put this question to some of you last Wednesday during my weekly office hours. Protecting the vulnerable and preserving our rights and liberties will require a great deal of hard work by people who believe in our constitution, democracy, and the rule of law. The work includes monitoring Trump and his government despite the disinformation, propaganda, and lies we'll be receiving and disseminating the truth. Maintaining a watch over the people and institutions we value. Being ready to sound the alarm in our communities and networks when those people and institutions are under assault. Litigating through state and federal courts where possible. Speaking out against malicious lies like those that spread during the election by Elon Musk on his propaganda machine X, and against vicious lies amplified on other MAGA mouthpieces. Using our economic muscle to boycott corporations that support Trump, Musk, and other centers of MAGA power. It will be up to us the American people who still cherish democracy to protect and preserve our system of self-government. As difficult as it is to fully accept what we are up against, the first step is to acknowledge it. 3D United States. The Guardian Newsletter. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against with smoke emission particulates, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. November 11th, 2024. Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief. Editor. Eight years ago, I stood in a ballroom in New York, surrounded by Donald Trump supporters whose low expectations turned into unbridled joy when their man won the U.S. presidential election. This time, the prevailing emotion in the crowd was vindication. They felt they had just witnessed the rightful restoration of their Caesar. But even as I witnessed young brothers in mega caps embracing and chanting US, USA, and even as I saw middle-aged Trump fans dancing euphorically to the village people's YMCA, I was aware that millions of hearts were sinking across the U.S. and the world. In a triumph of fear over hope, a former president branded a fascist by people who worked for him had defeated Kamala Harris, who was bidding to become the first woman in the United States' 248-year political history to occupy the Oval Office. In 2016, voters had rolled the dice on a relatively unknown quantity. In 2024, as the late-night comedian Jimmy Fallon put it, America decided to get back with their crazy act. It promises to be an even rockier relationship the second time around. Military aid to Ukraine could soon be terminated. And with climate deniers back at the controls, environmental regulations will be slashed in the name of Drill, Baby, Drill. Trump, who has said he would be a dictator only on day one, will return to a White House surrounded by lackeys and loyalists eager to indulge his dark impulses. That includes retribution against his enemies, including the media. At a campaign rally, Trump said he wouldn't mind if someone tried to shoot through the media to assassinate him. The imperial president will be aided by Elon Musk, the world's richest man and owner of the ex-social media platform, which increasingly resembles a right-wing propaganda machine. Robert Kennedy Jr., a vaccine conspiracy theorist, will apparently be working on healthcare, including women's health. The level of disinformation could therefore surpass even Trump's first term, which began with the lie that his inauguration crowd was the biggest ever and culminated in the lie that the 2020 election was stolen from him. He made more than 30,000 false and misleading statements, according to account by the Washington Post, and pushed more about immigrants eating cats and dogs during the election campaign. Fact-based journalism has therefore never been more essential.
The Guardian is determined to navigate Trump too. The revenge of Mega with a clear commitment to separating truth from lies, reality from fantasy. We will hold the powerful to account and refuse to say and wash chaos or normalize authoritarianism. Importantly, we will also tell the stories of the people whose lives will be impacted by potentially the most powerful U.S. president of modern times. 3E United States Health and Human Services HHS allocates $3.7 billion to lie heap to aid low-income households with energy costs. MSN Washington, D.C. The Administration for Children and Families ACF within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services HHS has announced. Washington Today, the Administration for Children and Families ACF at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, released $3.7 billion to the Low-Income Home Energy Assistance Program LIHEAP to help households lower their home energy costs, October 31, 2024. 3F United States articles from the cool down. Homeowners are kissing expensive energy bills goodbye with this amazing HVAC tech. The cool down. Heat pumps are able to perform both heating and cooling functions while at the same time using less energy because rather than generating hot or cool, a heat pump will lower your bills because it uses less energy to operate than a traditional heating and cooling system. United States. New research warns the rising cost of living will be unforgiving for millions of Americans. The cool down. Household energy costs are burdening a growing segment of the United States population as our overheating planet shifts the need less from. United States. Scientists optimistic about finding solution to one of the biggest problems with batteries. The cool down. Experts are now working to apply the science to iron-based batteries for crucial grid storage for renewable energy. United States. You can get up to $600 for these money-saving windows of the future. The cool down. You can significantly lower your tax bill by taking advantage of the home efficiency tax credits offered by the U.S. government. 3G United States, Pascal C. and Ian Global Enterprise, ACS Publications, American Chemical Society, Pascal, a startup out of a Harvard University chemistry lab, thinks it can sidestep the global warming impact of refrigerants with a heat pump. 3H United States, Climate Protection, Moving Forward with Electric Vehicles and Heat Pumps, MLTNews.com It is possible to find a heat pump installation that is more expensive than a combination of a natural gas furnace and central air, but if you shop, 3I United States, High Performance and Durable Window Type Air Filter Based on Embedded PVD FDRFE, ACS Publications, American Chemical Society, Fine inhalable particulate matter PM2.5 is a harmful airborne pollutant with serious repercussions to public health worldwide. To prevent the 3J United States, what are heat pumps and can they save you money in the long run? Pressreader.com, not only are these heating systems, such as heat pumps, better for the environment than oil and gas boilers, they tend to be better for your pocket. 3K United States, winter of 202,425, tip to be the biggest yet for heat pumps in commercial premises. ACR Journal, Craig said, we are seeing increased interest from businesses in heat pumps, especially in the rental market, which allows them to try out heat pump. 3L United States West Coast, the worst U.S. cities for air pollution and why they are on the West Coast. Geographical. The small particulates from wood burning can cause serious health effects. Ranking second, its levels of fine particulate pollution are nearly. 4A Michigan. EGLE launches new air monitoring dashboard. State of Michigan. In addition to ozone and particulate matter less than 10 and less than 2.5 microns in diameter PM10 and PM2.5, other pollutants like sulfur. 4B Michigan Detroit. He'll try, but Trump can't stop the clean energy revolution. Planet Detroit. A heat pump powers heating and cooling in a Detroit home despite heat pumps use that water to heat or cool a space, which is vastly more. 5. Texas. Heat pumps could save these Texas households money, reduce grid strain. A C. Smart cities dive. The state should focus on deploying heat pumps in homes that currently use inefficient electric resistance heaters, say authors of a paper from 6. Vermont and New York. Wildfire smoke leads to poor air quality in Vermont and New York. MSN, smoke from wildfires burning down in the mid-Atlantic and southern nine reasons you should avoid a wood-burning fireplace. AZ Animals US. 7. Australia Tasmania. Fuel reduction burn. Whole well road. Beacons field avoid smoke ABC emergency. Wood heaters with fires and bushfires. Incident name, smoke alert fuel reduction burn whole well road. Beacons field avoid smoke. Status, 8A United Kingdom and Canada. CBC Radio 1's As It Happens interview with Rosamund Adu Kissy Debra about the death of her daughter Ella because of air pollution aired November 6, 2024. 8B United Kingdom and Canada. Business advocacy group says Ottawa shouldn't tax carbon rebates. MSN, Starmer to ban gas boilers and force developers to install heat pumps. Daily Mail, Starmer to ban gas boilers and force developers to install heat. 8C United Kingdom Scotland. Doctors call on Scottish government to reconsider its decision to drop ban on wood burners in homes. Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh. Full coverage. The Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh, RCP, the Royal College of General Practitioners, RCGP, in Scotland, and the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health, RCPCH, in Scotland, are calling on the Scottish government to reverse its position given the impact wood burners have on air pollution through the release of harmful fine particulate matter, PM2.5. 8D. United Kingdom Scotland. Doctors react as Scotland ditches wood burning ban. Air quality news. Wood burning stoves in new built homes. The new build heat standard would burning stoves in new build homes. The new build heat standard. A group of Scottish doctors have criticized the Scottish government for U-turning on regulations that would have banned the installation of wood burning stoves in new build homes. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke. Emission particulates, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. The new build heat standard, NBHS, regulations have now been reworded to permit the installation of bioenergy and peat main heating systems and any type of secondary heating systems. 
The original regulations came into force in April this year, but were temporarily suspended in September, pending the outcome of a review. The result of that review is the scrapping of the new regulations completely. Among a number of health professionals speaking out against this was Professor Jill Belch, co-chair of the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh's Short Life Working Group on Air Pollution, who said, Wood burning in the UK accounts for the majority of the killer pollution particles, PM2.5 in our air. It can produce over 600 times more air pollution than a diesel truck in a wood burner sitting room. Wood burning has been implicated in many lung diseases, but also in invasive breast cancer and lung cancer in non-smokers. People's health is at stake. The Scottish government could have applied a restriction to the installation of wood burners in cities and also in air quality management areas, AQMAs. There is huge disappointment about this decision within the medical profession, and we asked the Scottish government to think again. Professor Andrew Elder, president of the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh, said, Poor air quality remains the largest environmental risk to public health in the UK, and the evidence about the dangers of particulate matter on human health is strong. Given the quantities of PM2.5 that are produced by wood burners, the Scottish government must reconsider its position on a ban on their installation in urban areas without delay. Dr. Monroe Stewart, RCGP Scotland Clinician Representative for Climate and Sustainability, said wood burners in urban areas increase the amount lung disease we see in children, increase the risks of heart attacks, strokes, dementia, and cause cancers. We have a duty as doctors to speak up for our patients who suffer from air pollution, and we are concerned about the harm that delaying legislation will cause. RCPCH Officer for Scotland, Dr. Mary Stark said, Air pollution is one of the biggest risks to children's health, and exposure to air pollution is now the second leading risk factor for death in children under five, both globally and in the UK. Wood burning stoves, though more common in wealthier urban areas, contribute significantly to this issue and disproportionately impact more vulnerable populations. Children are especially vulnerable to air pollution because they inhale more air than adults in proportion to their body weight. Breathing in dirty air as a child irreversibly stunts lung growth and continues to affect lung capacity in adulthood and increases the risk of chronic disease later in life. Recognizing these risks, pediatricians strongly support national policies and legislation aimed at improving indoor and outdoor air quality. Phasing out of wood burning stoves in urban areas in favor of cleaner heating sources is a crucial step towards protecting child health. Therefore, we are disappointed to see the ban won't progress. 9 Sweden. Swedish startup gains 1 million euros for heat pump market expansion. Arctic startup. Stockholm-based green tech company DREM has raised 1 million euros in funding from Investors Peak by founders, Redstone, and Futurum Ventures to support. 10 India. Undeniable role of crop residue burning CRB in the rural air pollution increase. Eureka Alert. The continuous measurements of source pollutants directly emitted from CRB, such as particulate matter of aerodynamic radius of 2.5 micrometer PM2.5, 11A Pakistan, battling smog, the News International, and more than 128,000 deaths occur in Pakistan due to air pollution illnesses. Most of these deaths are due to particulate matter PM10 and PM2.5, 11B Pakistan. Pakistan's toxic smog cover is now visible from space. The Independent. Pakistan cities slip under toxic smog as live readings for Lahore show PM2.5 levels 100 times over what who prescribes 0.12 APM2.5 and neck cancer. Air pollution exposure and head and neck cancer incidents. Scientific reports nature. To investigate air pollution's effect in the form of PM2.5 particulate matter measuring less than 2.5 microns on head and neck aerodigestive. 12 BPM 2.5 and Parkinson's disease. Air pollution exposure may up risk for Parkinson's disease and dyskinesia. Neurology advisor. Researchers conducted a population-based case control study to examine whether air pollution in the form of particulate matter with a diameter of 2.5 micrometers, 